Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Redstone Handbook episode 8. A series of videos designed to teach you the fundamentals of redstone so you can start to create your own designs and understand how other people's designs work. In this video we will be going over a few circuits that are the basics of larger contraptions. These circuits are used in conjunction with each other to create much larger and more complicated redstone designs to accomplish more complicated tasks. Firstly, let's take a look at the monostable circuit, often used to get one tick pulses. Generally, a monostable circuit means it has a stable output that will not change unless the input is triggered, just like boomers when faced with climate change. The first two that we're going to look at guys are the rising edge and falling edge. Rising edge simply means outputting a signal when the input turns on, and falling edge is outputting a signal when the input turns off. Now all of these first ones are rising edge monostable circuits and pretty much do exactly the same thing. But depending on your resources and space, you may need to use a different of these designs. There are a couple more guys, but I just included a few here. But let's firstly go through the rising edge monostable circuits. Now, like I said, that means we'll get an output, which will be shown through this little lamp here. When we press the button on the rising edge as it's being powered. So when we click this here, we get an output really quickly and this is just a one tick which is generally what you want from a rising edge monostable circuit so when we press this we get a one tick that actually is two because the lamp stays on for two because it only can do that it doesn't really like one ticks but the lamp is just there to show you guys that we are getting pulses through it now you can do this with a observer here on the end of a piston so when it moves it actually updates itself because it's moved to a different block so it senses an update and it will send a one tick pulse automatically only sends one tick pulses through this redstone here and we'll turn this lamp on so as you go press the button and when that unpowers it pulls it back and you can do the same thing facing in different directions that's why this one is so useful so you can put it on the end facing that way as well and obviously it updates as well just like that and yeah so you can do that in all sorts of different ways you can do it facing upwards and downwards and all sorts of awesome things with the observer it's really really handy and now moving on to this one this is the least resource intensive there's no comparators there's no observers or anything like that we just press this button here and it lights this redstone and then instantly cuts it off like one tick later so you get one tick of redstone and then the piston takes two ticks to pulse out and then it breaks the line there so the redstone is no longer connected so if you look you do get one tick into the lamp there and that's that all right guys moving on to falling edge monostable circuits now again these all do the exact same thing but with different amounts of resources so this does a very similar thing here it cuts off this wire but guys it does it when you unpower the thing so you're going to get power here when this button stops powering so we power gets nothing and then at the very end so this has a delay of two ticks which is the same amount of time it takes for this piston to push out so it never powers this redstone here until the end this this takes an extra tick to turn off as pistons pull back instantly so there we go that cuts it off at the beginning and then powers it at the end so that's on the falling edge and here we go guys another similar one you have um, pretty much the same thing here it uh, cuts off the uh, this will power this block but it will get moved out of the way before that happens and then at the end the same thing happens this powers for a little bit longer than the piston does and you get a pulse through that lamp let's just see that again right at the end there we go now we have another one here which is uh, the same as the design over there except all i've done is move this wire to here instead of here so when you press it it doesn't power but when it gets pulled back it does power at the end and then you have a very similar thing here just powers at the end like that so that is the falling edge monostable circuits now if i said a dual edge detector you would probably guess that it would send a pulse on both the rising edge and the falling edge of a circuit and you would be right so in this first design guys we have a redstone torch down here that is turned off and when we move this block over here it turns on for a second powering this and then because this is powering this redstone here so what we get is this for a split second that redstone turns off and that lets the torch turn on so we get one at the beginning and then at the end when it moves back as well so these all do very similar things so here you go you just have redstone there and there on this very simple design this is the same one as over there and it does it on the front and at the end very good and then this one is pretty much the same it's just a bit more compact so this powers the redstone when it jumps up and then it powers the block which then powers the redstone on the way down that's uh very compact 
Okay, pulse extenders are up next. And as the name suggests, they extend pulses so we can power or unpower things for larger amounts of time than the few ticks we get from inputs like buttons, etc. So this one here is very simple. You have a repeater which is on four ticks of delay, so it will power this for longer and longer. And every time you power one of these blocks, it powers this redstone as well. So it just keeps it on for much longer. There we go. So even when that un gets unpowered there, these ones are still powering that. So we get a longer... We have the light on for longer than the button is on for. And that's what we wanted. So we can move on to a couple of these other designs. Now these are really cool. You can add in more blocks of quartz or whatever block you want into here. That, uh, that'll give you a longer pulse. So in here we just have one item. It shoots into here, turns the system on, and then it resets afterwards. So there we go. This stays in for that long. These move over to this, and then they move all the way back. And the more you put in this hopper here the longer that pulse is going to stay on for. But the one you're going to be using most often, guys, is probably this one here. Now, this uses a bunch of comparators, so all you got to do is put the comparator going this way, and then comparators going this way with redstone at both ends. And if you press the button, you get a long pulse from there as it decays slowly going around over here. Um, I could explain this, guys, but basically a comparator takes a full strength signal here, then it gets to here, and then it drops to 14. And then it gets to here all the way, this is 14, then it drops to 13. So it takes a little while, keeps going around until it reaches zero. So as you can see, it starts fading little by little until there's no pulse left. Right, and there we go. And the more you add, the longer the delay. Now, if you want it to turn on straight away, you just put it on the first two bits of redstone like that. And then the light turns on straight away. Okay guys, so pulse multipliers are used when you want to get multiple outputs from a single input. You could do this by running the input into a clock or with some other simpler methods depending on your needs. So guys, this first one is really simple. You just use an observer facing this way. By the way guys, I have a resource pack on that tells me which way hop is and observers are facing. You can get that from Vanilla Tweaks. Just Google that, you'll find it. You can get all sorts of awesome things. It just is really helpful when you're building. So I got this little arrow here. Tells me that it's gonna send the redstone pulse that way. So as you can see, guys, we press this button. It's going to uh, turn this redstone on, which is gonna update this, which is gonna send a pulse through. And then when it turns off, it's gonna update again and send another pulse. So we get two pulses from one activation of a button. That is pretty cool. So guys, this little design here will get us three outputs for one button push. So let's take a look at that lamp there. One, two, and three. It's a very quick, it just goes around here. It uh, obviously turns this lamp off when we power that. That goes through here, then that turns this one on, pulses through, and it goes until it runs out of signal there, basically. So yeah, that's pretty cool. That doesn't take very long. You get three pulses out of it, which is awesome. Now guys, this is my favorite pulse multiplier. So this is a little bit more complicated to build, but if you wanna know how to build any of these contraptions, there will be a link to a wiki page in the description, which is where you can find all of these machines and it'll help you understand how and why they work and everything like that. But this one here, we have, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Basically, you put as many items in this dropper here as you want pulses out the other side so this is the output here i've put it into a dropper because the lamps don't update quick enough but um in here you just have one item this activates it, it shoots it into here which does this comparator which turns all of this on uh, everything will shoot across into this hopper then when it's finished it will reset and put them all back in here so currently we have six items in here this dropper over here is full with diamonds so we've got no no diamonds in our inventory so when we push this button we should get exactly six shot out of the dropper there we go pick them up we have six now let's just say we wanted to get 12 uh 10 out put 10 in there put six back uh let's get 10 out of here now this should shoot 10 because we've changed the amount of items in here and then they'll all flow back in like that and we should pick up 10 diamonds fantastic what an awesome awesome machine and now we're on to pulse dividers they're not used very often but they are very useful they produce a pulse or an output after a certain amount of input pulses kind of like a counter so every time you press the button you're adding to the counter until you get to a certain amount so this first one here, guys, is actually pretty easy to build. You just have hoppers going around in a circle there, looping into a dropper. And in this first hopper here, you want to place an item. None of the other hoppers should have any items in them whatsoever. And when this dropper has something into, in it, the comparator will pick that up and transport it into this light. So we'll get an output. 
So guys, we have to push this five times to get an output. So we push it once, twice, three, four, and now when we press it this time, guys, we should get an output through that lamp. There we go. And it resets again. It's back in here. So every time we press this, it, it um, unpowers this, which um, powers this, which turns off this redstone for a split second, meaning it can move from this hopper to this hopper. Eventually it gets to here, and then the redstone activates the dropper, shooting it back into here. So we just get a short output into the lamp. And the amount of hoppers you have is how many inputs you would need to complete the circuit to uh, get the output. And guys, this is similar to that design over there where you get to choose how many inputs you want. So this one is three inputs. You can put as many items in here as you want to change it. So if I just put one in here, it would just be one input and it would go every time. Or you could put all, you could put as many as you want in here. I've put three, so it'll take three button pushes to light that lamp up. So you press it once and an item moves into here. Now these over here just have one item in it. And once this uh, fills up and then empties, that'll shoot over to here for a second. And then we'll get a comparator output because something's gone into here. And then we will get an output through here into the lamp. So I've pushed it once. I'll push it a second time. We'll get two in here. There's just one left. So when I push it this time, we'll get a lamp output like that very quickly. And then everything will reset and the item will be back over here. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So you can add more items in here if you want it to have more inputs. So guys, this is one of the coolest things I've ever found in Minecraft. I don't know why I'm so excited about it, but this is basically a counter and it's going to count up in binary. So on this side, we have one, two, four, eight, and 16. If you guys don't know, binary is a counting system with only ones and zeros. It's basically what computers work on at the very lowest form of like programming. Uh, so yeah, basically, um, when we press this, it's going to set it to zero. So when the numbers are here, that means it's a zero and when it's here it's a one so ones and zeros are all that we have in this counting system so uh if we had it here this would be on number two so there'd be one zero which is actually two and if we had it here it would be one zero zero which is actually four but you can put them in more places than that so we could put one here which is number one as you can see so that'd be four zero one which is five so this thing uh, is awesome. The first time you press it, it resets it to zero like this. And now from here on in, it's going to implement it by one every time. So we're at one, then it's going to switch it to two. So it's one zero now. Then we can hit this. It's going to go to uh, three because we got two and one. So that's one one, which is three. And then four is one zero zero. So it's going to go one zero zero. And then we're going to do this again, guys. And it's going to go one zero one, which is five. And it does this. Forever. You could make these pistons go on for a very long way and get to some really high numbers if you wanted to. Um, however, we don't we don't really need to do that. I'm just doing that for this. So we can get to 31 basically before it resets. So 31 would look a little bit like this. We would have one on every level uh, like that. That would be 31, which is how it started. And then you'd do this and it would reset to zero again. So yeah, it's pretty damn fantastic. So if you wanted 16 guys, you'd have that there. And then you have the rest of them up like this. That is that is 16 and six, 18 is this. It's It's awesome. I love this thing. The best thing about this, guys, is it's just so simple to build. All you have is a couple of pistons, sticky pistons with uh, repeaters running into them. And all you got to do is give it a one tick pulse like this. And it implements it by one every single time. So awesome. So guys, I know it's been over a year since I released one of these videos, but I had a few comments saying that they wanted the series back. So I've made this video, which is very cool, but I don't really have any more ideas left for this series. I think I've pretty much explained all the basics without actually telling you how to make actual contraptions. So if you guys have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave a comment down below. And I'll do my best from there. Now guys, if you're not subscribed and want more content, please hit that sub button and like the video if this was helpful. Links to other episodes of the Redstone Handbook are down in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.